I'm Mark Bickley and welcome to The Crow's Show, brought to you by Hungry Jack's Bourbon Burger. Also joining us later, Ebony Marinoff, who talks to Jake Saliga about his long-term commitment to the club. But first, in challenging times, responsibility falls on the leadership group to help lift their teammates both on and off the field. Ben Keyes, for example, works tirelessly in the role. He's known to be meticulous with his preparation and has an unmatched work ethic. It's awesome to you know, be um, you know, voted in by, by your peers uh, into that position, um, but I've just tried to, to be as close to myself as possible, um, really try and um, yeah, just bring what I normally bring um, and what I've done over the last few years, really just trying to emulate that. Um, it's awesome to support Dorse. Um, he's a great, great leader, great captain, but we've also got a number of guys that have stepped up into the role as well. Um, you know, Murph, Hingey, Fogg, um, Junior. So it's awesome to have these new faces in the, in the group as well. Um, so it's been a really, uh, really fun experience. I feel like I've done you know a little bit of everything. Um, I, I kind of got my uh, go in the team as a tagger um, and then moved in the midfield full time and um, really gained some confidence. I could play at the level, um, really got my hands on the footy, um, you know, being around the contest. Uh, so I really think those couple of years I was really able to hone, hone my skills in the AFL play and really feel uh, confident. Uh, and then the move forward came as well. Um, and that's something that's been, um, been challenging, but I've loved it. Um, really starting to get the hang of it now. Um, you know, it's been probably, you know, this the second year doing it probably full time, uh, really enjoying it. Um, probably don't get, the, don't get the stats and get the footy as much as, uh, as you do in the midfield, um, but really important role. And um, I think it really suits me, it suits my game. And uh, yeah, having that versatility, something I've always wanted to have as a player, um, just you know, longevity in the game, you know, being able to do different roles, being valuable to the team, they're things I value. So um, being able to do that's been awesome. I really see it as sort of a, you know, a lifestyle rather than a job. Um, you know, so when you leave the facility, um, you know, there's still work to be done. Um, but look, I, I really enjoy that side of football. I love the, the high performance side. Um, you know, so I'm always knocking on Darren Burgess' door, trying to get little tips, always working with the guys in the gym as well to you know, try and get little extras that I think I can add. Um, so it's been an awesome journey along the way, you know, adding little things to, to my routine, to my lifestyle um, that's really helped me. So yeah, it's just something I'm, I'm lucky that I really enjoy it. Um, it's really a side of you know, sport that I really enjoy. So really trying to yeah, get every little bit out of myself, um, trying to find advantages where I can. And yeah, hopefully that'll uh, hold me in good stead for a long, healthy career. Stay with us, still to come, the youngster who switched roles and started his AFL career. And we'll dissect the game against the Blues. Were you there to see the sweat? Were you there to hear the rise? Were you there to taste the victory? Were you there to feel the pride? Together, we're stronger. Be there in 2024. After playing nearly all his teenage football as a forward, Luke Nankervis finally made his AFL debut as a defender. That was in round 19 last year, but he had to wait two more weeks before he could play alongside his two housemates, Josh Rochelle and Jake Saligo. Now he hopes he can join them as a regular player at the elite level. Obviously we've all been trying to push each other a lot throughout the years so for us to all be almost rewarded at the moment and playing pretty good footy as a trio, it's been uh, yeah, unreal so living with those boys has definitely helped my footy in that sense. It's been challenging obviously because you're learning new positions. started off at half forward then I moved to half back last year and now I'm on the wing so I think that half back move was to develop my wing and all of them kind of combine into each other that forward craft and connection um, combines into that wing role and so there's a halfback role so yeah it's definitely all been helpful. I've played five games and I reckon four of them have been some crazy ones especially that MCG as growing up in Melbourne as a young fellow I've dreamed of living that like playing AFL on the MCG um, so to be able to do that against Melbourne in front of friends and family was one of the best experiences of my life. When you're out there you kind of look around and you almost can't comprehend it it's almost like 
but you've dreamed of it your whole life and then you're out there and you're looking around, there's thousands of people, a massive stadium, so it's pretty hard to, to soak it all in. Thanks to Toyota, we want to see your trick kicks. Outside, inside, any angle, any target. Monthly winners will receive a Crows Guernsey. The overall winner will receive an exclusive behind the scenes match day experience at the Crows Round 22 Western Bulldogs Clash. Email crowsshow at afc.com.au or post to hashtag Crows Trick Kick. Show us what you can do. Best footy moment would probably be making the AFL Grand Final. Oh, there's been a few, but my latest would be two, in my 250th, having all my family and friends there and celebrating for a few days post. Probably Dawson's goal after the showdown. Oh, probably my first showdown was pretty cool. Playing in the Grand Final was unbelievable. I still remember that moment in the warm-up, looking around, going, how good is this? Kicking the first goal was nice too. Um, it's more, it's not one moment, it's more just the people, I think, that you've played with along the way. I've always enjoyed that. Probably my 100th game, that was a prelim final in uh, 2017. The car rides to and from the games, you know, especially after you've had a good game. The car ride back home and having a chat to your, to your dad and, and your brother, um, brothers. I so was watching Cork win the All Ireland in 2010. Getting drafted this past year just going was pretty awesome. Probably winning a grand final in Unfortunes. My best footy moment was probably my first win with Adelaide Crows, which was in the showdown. I think probably playing my first senior game at my local club at Mafra and my debut game. So winning a premiership in uh, under 14 with my best mates. Best footy memory is winning the Colts flag with all my best mates last year. Since 1991, 260 players have worn the Crows AFL Guernsey and arguably Andrew Jarman has been the most colourful and charismatic of them all. After retiring as a player, he's given back to the game he loves by coaching, first in the Sandful and Waffle, and more recently at community level. Jars is now in charge at Port Nalunga, whose season, like other clubs, began this weekend. And Bendigo Bank is back again to support grassroots footy. What is it about coaching? I think it's to service the ego. It's, it's, it's like a, it's like a drug. It really is. I need to feel it every year. And and I had a period where I didn't do it. I missed it. And for me, it's it's a, it's been in my DNA since I was six years old. And I can't let it go. Love it. L love it because, you know, I had a wonderful football career and had a great journey. So why not pass that on? You know, my wife. She says, when are, you gonna, when are you gonna stop? And I said, well, I don't know. I don't know when I'm gonna stop. Because she says, she says, well, why don't you just not coach and just go and, I don't know, play? I said, well, I'm 58. I don't know if I can keep playing, but we'll obviously finish, started off with Gazer in 2000, and then we won a premiership that year and, and helped um, get us back in the Div 1. And then North Adelaide came, and then I thought, well, let's go to another state and have a go. So we went to Perth coached the Perth Football Club, the Demons, and um, then came home, I thought that'll do me. And then Iron Bank Football Club in the Hills competition, which was very good back then, and back to Gaza for <laughs> a sequel. <laughs> and then Williston and the Barossa League, which was, you know, pretty good comp. And now currently at Port uh, Norlunga in the Southern Football League. 
A, a lad called Ryan Fitzgerald, a much loved figure, around the Adelaide Crow circles and, and just a, his dad's a legend of the football club. He's now got two sons playing in our junior program, so he just <laughs> pulled me back in. So this is my second year down there. Run the ball! Run! Run! Back yourself in and run! My wife is a very calming figure in my life. Said, you're getting a bit agitated because obviously she got told through some, you know, bit bit fire in a coach's box, which most of us do because we're competitive. She said, why don't you light, take a lavender candle and just light it before the game? And I thought, that's a great idea. First time I did it, we won. Roosters had a good win. I thought, how good is this? On this particular night, we're playing Nord on a Friday night at Nord. As you know, it's pretty tight back days in those days, and so it was only a titchy little coach's box. We were in nice suits, and I had the candle lit. And I stood up, got a bit, because we were getting fried by, you know, quarter time we were getting destroyed. And my brother was just like, there's a smell in the, in the coach's box, someone's on fire. I said, what? Is the grandstand on fire? And he turned around and he said, no, you are. Your candles lit your jacket up. And that's what happened. And then after that, they shut it down. So anyway, I'll try anything just to get, see if I can get an edge. Take a look at this mark from Norwood youngster, Ned Bowman. Take a ride! Oh! You've just seen Mark of the Year in your Sample Under 18 competition. Centre wing at Mount Team Kia, and Ned Bowman was high as you have ever seen. It's one of the best marks I've seen for a long time. So Jake, you signed six years, was there much hesitation or an exciting time for the footy club? I was just super excited that the club was backing me in for that long to be honest. And I signed it with Josh, um, same sort of time, so um, to have him there as well that signed on, it really made it easy for me. And um, the club's been super good to me, and coming over from Victoria obviously, so um, to, to make me feel so welcomed and my family make them feel so welcomed as well, I was really happy with, so yeah, there's no hesitation for me. And when you got here, I mean, can you tell us what you brought to the footy club? I like to call myself a clean player, just try and be myself and that's all you can really do in these sort of environments, so yeah. Is there anyone you modelled your game on um, yet in the AFL? Sounds a bit quirky now because I'm playing with him, but Sloaney was a big player that I looked up to, sort of um, to my under 16 to 18. Like his cleanness, his, um, his hunt for the ball is what I really aspired to be like. And then come to the club, like everyone's really helped out. Laddie was really good in my first couple of years. I mean, yeah, just the likes of those players are just, yeah, really feed off them. You talk about the older players, I mean, you found a couple of best mates in Josh um, and Nanks. You live with them and can you tell us about what that's like? Yeah, it's good fun. It's um, early on, it did get a bit silly here and there, and, um, <laughs> but that's all part of living with three 18 year olds and then now we're starting to mature up a bit and um, Josh has got a girlfriend, I've got a girlfriend and then Nanks looking for the love of his life at the moment, <laughs> so um, nah, it's good fun. Next generation coming through at the footy club. Are you excited for that and everyone sticking together? Super excited. Um, it's nice that we have sort of a young group that we can all relate to each other. Um, that makes it really easy to have the hard conversations. And But yeah, with Dawson as the captain as well, like he's fairly young. So yeah, just to have everyone together is super exciting. Can you tell us a little bit about, you've obviously had leaders amongst you, what makes Dor so unique and um, such a positive, I guess, change for the group? Um, I think he's just easy to relate to, like I said, he's not as old as sort of some captains, so um, he's just easy to get along with as well and makes good connections within the group. I mean, yeah, obviously he's a great leader on the field as well, so um, to have him as our captain, I'm really loving it. Do you have any aspirations to be a leader one day? Um, in the future, hopefully, yeah. Um, I'm learning a bit of it at the moment because I can be a bit quiet when we are um, down in games and all that stuff. So hopefully in the future I can become a leader. But for now I'm just going to work my own game. Perfect. Thanks for joining me today, Jakey. Thanks, Noffy. Woo! You want a burger? I love a burger. The burgers are better at Hungry Jack's. <laughs>
Let's look ahead to next week in the big match against the Bombers on Friday night. My first thing to keep an eye on is the Essendon midfield. Last time these two teams met in round 17 last year, Darcy Parrish and Zach Merritt had 39 possessions each. I think both of these guys are taggable and I wouldn't mind seeing Adelaide have a go at it with either Keys or Laird. Number two, Essendon's edge. Brad Scott wants his team to be a little bit nastier and we've seen it at times, but not the last time they visited Adelaide Oval. This type of tactic is designed to distract, so Adelaide have to make sure they keep the ball their focus. That's the real toughness. The absence of Jordan Ridley from the Essendon side through injury is a real bonus for Adelaide. Those intercepting defenders have been a thorn in the side of the Crows all year. Ben Mackay has been a handy pickup for the Bombers. He's getting better and better each week as he gets used to the Essendon system. So whoever gets him has to make him accountable. Number four, Essendon's X Factor, Jake Stringer. Without the suspended Peter Wright, he is their most dangerous forward. He looks like he's had a great preseason and is in ripping form at the moment. He's explosive and when he's on, he lifts his teammates. It looks like another big job for Max Michelani. I'm really looking forward to this one. There's nothing bigger than Friday night footy at Adelaide Oval against a big Victorian club. Whenever you take a photo of yourself or a friend at any of our games and post it to social media, make sure you use the hashtag WeFlyersOne. Let's settle on you. Please email faceinthecrowd at afc.com.au with photo ID to claim your prize of two tickets to Toyota's exclusive Hilux Hill at Adelaide Oval. Thanks for your company and I look forward to joining you again at 1.30 next Sunday on 7. Bye for now. Today's show brought to you by Hungry Jack's Bourbon Burger.